Hi, today's video we're going to look at adding a shop front to our contract that we are busy building in Starfront. So if you've been following up to now, you'll remember that the last thing that we did is we did a Vert 70, which is a vertical sliding window. Remember with that window, you have to stick to your standard sizes to ensure that your spring balance works properly. All right, so now we're going to add in a shop front. The shop front that we want to add looks like this. So it's a fairly simple shop front. It's got a double hinge door sitting in the middle of that shop front. Um, it's overall, it's 900 wide, this first panel, 1800 high wide where the door goes, 900 the panel to the right. The top light is 500 and the section where the door goes is 2 meters 100. All right, so that's the that's the door that we've got in design. Remember, once again, we have to work out what part is the frame and what part is the insert. So the frame is all the way around the outside. That's fairly simple. And then we've got two mullions that run all the way through. That mullion to the left of the door and that mullion to the right of the door. And we've got one transom that runs all the way through. We can also see from this design that the mullions are continuous, they are one continuous piece, and the transom is broken into three separate transoms. Alright, so that's what we're wanting to design. So this is where we were, so now we click on Add. This one we are going to give the reference SF1 for that shop front number one. Okay, first thing we have to choose is what type of product we are designing. We no longer can use Creolco windows, now we've got to use the second option, which is shop fronts. So I choose shop fronts, then I need to choose the system. Now on Starfront there are two different shop front systems, there's a Clip 44, which is the standard with Spico shop front system, and there's also a Clip 38 system that is available. So we're going to work with Clip 44. Now we have to choose the category. Obviously being a shop front, our categories are a lot more detailed than they would be if we are designing a casement window. First of all, if you look at the categories, these first lots all start with the word shop front. So a shop front by definition will have an R4 or an R6 cell at the bottom. And the mullions will run all the way through down to the floor. Whereas a window frame is going to have a 26B running across at the bottom. And the mullions are going to end just above that 26B. So that's your main difference between your shop front frames and your window frames. Then we have regular shop fronts, which are just normal shop front frames. We've got frames with corners, frames with upstands. We will do more advanced examples in another video. For now, we're just going to use the top option. It's a regular shop front. And remember, we looked on our drawing and we said that we want to have the mullions continuous. So I'm choosing that first option, regular shop front, mullions continuous. Then I use the button with the three dots to choose which frame I want. Now remember we need a frame that's got one transom that runs all the way through and it's got two mullions that run all the way through. So that's what we would call a three by two frame. It's got three horizontal divisions, two vertical divisions. So that is the frame that I need to use and I click on that frame and it immediately puts it on the screen for me. Now you'll notice straight away that a shop front frame now defaults to glass code LAM01. This is a default that you can set in your own program, but automatically assumes because it's a shop front that we must use safety glass. So that is fine. Now we've got, uh, once again, all the panels will default to one meter by one meter. Now we need to specify our dimensions. So let's just remind ourselves we need the first panel is 900, the middle panel is 1800, the right hand panel is 900, the top light is 500, and the bottom is 2 meters 100. It doesn't, it doesn't pay you to sit and enter in the overall width and height on a design like this, because it's not going to be split evenly anyhow. So we would rather go in straight away to width 1, width 2, width 3, which remember are our first three horizontal dimensions and H1 and H2, which are our first two vertical dimensions. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip overall width and height, and I'm going to start there with W1. 
So W1, we said was 900. Remember to use the tab key in between your dimensions. W2 is 1800. W3 is 900. Okay. Height 1, that is the height there of our top light section, we said was 500. Tab and the height 2 is 2 meters 100. Tab. Alright, so the program will automatically set that for you. Don't worry about the overall width and height. It will fix it as soon as you go on from this design. Now what I can do as well, I don't have to do this, but it's nice to check your, your frame. And it warns me that the mullion in cell 1 is going to exceed the maximum allowable deflection for the specified wind load. Watch lessons 1 and 2 if you don't understand what that means. The section has got an inertia of 23.13, but we require an inertia of 66.62. Okay, I can say that's okay, because Starfront will automatically set the correct million for me. And you'll see as well, Starfront has also at the same time, it has set my overall width and my overall height according to those dimensions that I've entered. Now I'm getting a second warning message. It says, warning, maximum glass area has been exceeded. The frame glass, so we're talking about the glass in the frame, not the glass in an insert, of 2.9 square meters for 6 more laminated glass has been exceeded. In other words, normal 6.38 laminate glass can go to a maximum of 2.9 square meters. And it's telling us that the pane in panel number 5, remember 5 there is my center pane, so it's talking about this piece of glass, has got an area of 3.5 square meters. So in other words, it exceeds the limit for your normal 6.38 laminate glass. So that is a warning, it's telling me I need to fix that glass. But I also know that I am going to put in a double hinge door into this big opening anyhow. And by putting that double hinge door in, I'm going to split that one piece of glass into two separate panels. So, in fact, once I put my insert into that opening, it's going to fix that problem for me. Alright, so that's fine. So what we do is now we need to put our inserts in. So let's start off with the door. Is we're going to choose opening number 5. Alright, because opening number 5, if you have a look there, that's where we want to put our door. What type of insert do you want to put in? Now, once again, because this is a shop front, there are a lot of different things that you can do. But we're starting off, we're just going to look at the top one, which is a hinge door. All right. Within hinge doors, I've got various categories. Now, these categories are a little bit difficult when you first use them. What that indicates is hinge door, single outward opening. Hinge door, double outward opening. Hinge door, single inward. Hinge door, double inward. And then these hinge door with a T is a hinge door that's got a top light. So there's a small top light above just the door section. We're not going to use that at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a double door, as we said, according to our design. But I'm going to use an outward opening door. Please be careful when working with an inward opening door in Clip 44, there are other constraints that you need to comply with. So for now, we're just going to take a double door. And then I must choose which double door I'd want to put in. So I can put in a door with no midrails, a door with one midrail, with two midrails, or with three midrails. Now, if you go back to our drawing, you'll remember that our drawing showed a door with no midrails. So I'm going to choose that first option there, which is just a door with no midrail. And it automatically puts that door in there for me. All right. If, just as a matter of interest, I now push my check design button, okay, my glass warning message is gone, but now there's a new warning that says my meeting style, that's where those two door styles come together, will exceed the maximum allowable deflection for the specified wind load. So remember your deflection calculations are not just for malleants and transoms, interlocks, meeting styles, door styles, etc. also have to comply. It says the section I've chosen has got an inertia of 20.86. Now that is actually the combined inertia of those two profiles together, but we require an inertia of 24.26. As long as, as when I say, okay, Starfront says Starfront 4 will automatically correct it, 
then I know I can carry on. I don't need to worry about that. And what Starfront has done is it's just put in a slightly heavier profile here for my meeting style. All right, but you'll see that that glass warning message is now gone because I've split that one big panel into its two separate panels anyhow. All right, so there's my door in place. Now let's just quickly have a look at what the original design was. We're there except for the fact that the panel above the door, we just want to split with a mullion. Now that's relatively easy to do, so let's just get rid of that drawing. So that panel above the door is going to be opening number two. So I want to put a mullion into opening number two. So what I can do now is I can use my green add insert button to add another insert. This time I choose panel number two. What is it that I want to put into that panel? Now you'll notice, for example, I couldn't put a door in the top here. It's not possible to put a door up in the middle of the air. So what I will choose is just the mullion. It's only one category. And then I can choose between one, two or three mullions. So I'm going to put in a single mullion. And there's my shop front design. Now I just want to show you a small variation on that. Because if I go back to my original drawing, you'll notice that these four pieces of glass at the bottom have got asterisks on. And let's imagine that the, the notes on this job say that that glass needs to be safety glass. In other words, I don't have to use laminated safety glass at the top here. Alright, so how could we change this glass to, let's say, standard formal float glass on this design. Well, that is relatively easy to do. First of all, when I designed this frame, the program automatically put LAM01 into that frame for me. LAM01 is the code for your normal 6.38 PVB laminate. If I go and change the default glass in the frame, then I'm going to end up changing all of these panels, except where the door is, because the door already, if I just go to my door insert, you'll see the door's already got its own glass code. So I don't want to change the default glass in this frame, because then I'm going to change all the panels. I just want to change the pieces of the glass across the top. All right, so first of all, the easy one, if we use our next insert and previous insert um, green buttons here. This allows me just to jump between those two inserts that I've added. So in opening number two I have my mullion and in opening number five I have my hinge door. Okay so let's go back to opening number two and if I change the glass just on this opening number two, just scroll up a little bit and I choose clear float four. Then we can see immediately on the right hand side here, what the program has done is it's put clear float 4 into each of those. Now guys, this is not just simply changing the glass, obviously the bead has to adjust and the wedge gaskets have to adjust automatically. So Starfront, when it changes it, it makes all of those changes for you. But how do I now change the glass in this top left hand panel and this top right hand panel? I want those to be formal glass as well. Well, I don't have an insert in those openings, so I don't have anything to change. If I change my frame, I'm going to end up changing all the glass. So what I actually do is I put in a special type of insert into this opening number one and opening number three. So what I do is I go to add, I choose panel number one. What type of insert do I want to put there? And I use this one here, which is glass panel, all right? And what that is doing is it's saying just insert a different piece of glass into that opening. The category, there is only one category, and in fact there is only one insert. So I can choose that insert. Now, you can't see anything has changed here because that glass panel is automatically going to take the same glass is what the frame was created with. But I can change it. So similarly to how I changed the glass either side of that mullion, I can go into this glass panel and change that to formal glass. 
And now you'll see in that top left hand corner, I now have my formal glass. Okay, let's do the top right hand corner as well. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to add another insert. That's going to be opening number three according to my reference drawing. So opening number three, I put in a glass panel. It's general, there is only one insert that I can use, but I must remember to change my glass to clear float four. And now I've created my shop front with clear float four running across the top and laminated glass below it. Now guys, please just be intelligent about this. It's not always going to be cheaper to put formal glass at the top because you need to look at your glass utilization. It could be that off out of the offcuts of those pieces of laminated glass, I can automatically get those top pieces anyhow. So instead of having to use two different glass types, I can just use all of one glass type. But that we will cover in a future video on the more advanced side of costing and doing your designs. All right, so that designs what we set out to design in this particular example. Okay, now I can check my design and everything passes because the program has automatically fixed the mullions, the door styles, it's checked the glass area and everything else. Just to show you briefly where you can access that additional information, under my frame section, if I go to my frame options, here I can see that I'm defaulting to the 13 mil angle bead. That is the standard bead that works with the color-coded gaskets. My corners are horizontal, which means I've chosen to run my horizontal member through. Just double check with your drawing. Very often your, your customer won't care, but if they do, in this situation, for example, this has been drawn with the verticals running through, not the horizontal. So if that is exactly how the customer wants it, then what I need to do is I need to tell it to change that to the verticals. All right. And what that will do for me is that will now change that vertical member to run through. And that affects your cutting list because now this 26B running across the top here has to become 30 mils shorter either side and these vertical ones have to become 30 mils longer on the one side. All right. So those are, that was looking at your corners. It says my frame is made out of a 26B. So that is the default that I've chosen. It says my mullion is a 105B. Now that is according to the wind load calculation of a thousand pascals and to ensure that those mullions do not deflect by more than their length divided by 175. Okay, I can change it to a stronger mullion without any problem, but if I change it back to a standard mullion, standard 26 mullion, when I check the design, the mullion is going to fail and Starfront is going to set the mullion back to a 105. Because a 105 is now the minimum size for that mullion. My sill is an R4 and my transom is a 26. Now you might want to say, well look, I don't want uh, 104 deep mullions and then skinny transoms. So if you need to, you could go in here to your transom option and say, alright, I also want to make my transoms a 105. So now my mullions and my transoms are using the same profile. And that too could save you money in terms of material ordering and things like that. Okay, so those are my frame options. Under my frame components, I get basically all of the different hardware that I'm going to use. My butterfly gasket, the screws used to assemble the frame, the glass setting blocks, there's a video covering those, the pop rivets, and the wedge gasket. Alright, there's my frame options. If I have a look at my insert, let's go to panel number five where my door is. Let's look at my insert options. My bead on my door is a standard angle 30 mil bead. It's using an R4 on the head, an R1 on the jam, and an R11 on the meeting stop. Because of the wind load requirements, it had to increase the size of that meeting stop. Now you might not want a situation where your door styles for your jams are 45 mil, but your meeting style is 60. So you can go in here and you can say, well, I want to use a 60 mil normal R11 on my door style as well. 
and then you'll see my door style is the same width as it. By the way, every now and then I'm just clicking on this button which says refresh graphic. It just updates the drawing according to the changes that I make under my options here. Okay, so I've now got my jams and my meeting styles both 60 mil. My mid rail, I don't have a mid rail on the door, so it doesn't matter. And then my sill is made up of a R4 at the bottom with a box threshold. If this is possibly an internal shop front that you don't want any threshold, then you can just go into these options and choose an option without a threshold. Alright, so those are all of your insert components, sorry, your insert options. Under the insert components is my butterfly gasket, my rivets for my cross connector, my control mechanism, the control is the moving part. So in the situation of a hinge door, that would be the actual hinges that I'm using. On a pivot door, it would be my pivot set, for example. Uh, friction stay rivets, we don't have any friction stays on this design. What flush bolt we want to use on the door, my glass setting blocks, what door handle I want to use. And there you can go and change it to whatever handle. So if I wanted to change my handle on this door, I would just click where it's got the handle there. And I could go, let's say I'm looking for a slim line. And I could say I want to choose a white slim line handle for this door. And say OK. And now this door will be designed using the white slim line handle. As opposed to that universal handle. That is the lock that's going to be used. The magnetic catch. Nut, threaded rod, and washer. So you can change every single item that you need on that design. Alright guys, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you've learned how to now do a basic shop front on the Starfront program. Remember to stay healthy, stay happy, and we'll see each other again soon in a future video. Bye-bye.